I want to see the Alliance map. Tell me more about Kent. Basim has written, claiming to have found the woman Fulke and asking for your aid. He has taken shelter at St. Hadrian's Priory. Any news of Sigurd? Nothing he mentioned. But if he has found a paladin Fulke, Sigurd cannot be far behind. I will go as soon as I can. Good. Be safe, Eivor. Basim has news of Sigurd. I should find him soon. Dag, Basim has brought word of Sigurd's location. We're leaving at once to find him. Well done, Eivor. After so long, it finally occurs to you to search for our Jarl. I applaud your half-hearted effort, but I will not be joining you. Dag, this is no joke. On the ship, now. Someone needs to stay home and direct the affairs of the settlement. As you seem to shun this place as often as possible, it must fall to me. Sigurd's life is at stake. We need you there. No, I am needed here. Do you doubt me so completely that you will not raise an axe to save your Jarl? A fine way of putting it, Wolfkist. But go, find the Jarl, bring him back. Only do not get lost along the way, as you seem to more and more these days. This is not done, Dag. We will speak when I return. This area is off limits.
Huh? Did not Augustine make a distinction between faith and understanding? That is my point. So you hold no stock in faith, only in the rational proof, the science of the divine. You're bold to defy your teachings. No, no, that's not what I mean. Let me, uh, let me explain, if it might, how to put it. What I mean to say is faith is paramount. Yes, for without it, Christ's sacrifice means nothing. He died to save us, did he not? From the original sin of Adam and Eve? Yet evil persists. Yes, evil persists because he gave us free will. Does a newborn babe, slain by a despot, have free will? Yes. No, I mean, that is too simplistic. Or the priest whose heart is torn from his chest by the wolf? Judas, who was predestined to betray the Nazarene? Uh, some argue Judas was used. Do my ears deceive me, Brother Hortbert? You question the scriptures? Declare Judas an innocent? A preposterous blasphemy! No, no, uh, that is not what I said. <laughs> Brother Cedric, am I not the most pious of his servants? Out! Out! Making new friends? A person's tongue gives you a taste of their heart, Eivor. And such information is often useful. And how do these sallow Christians taste? It was only a figure of speech, Eivor. And I have tired of it already. Is this how it must be between us? Of course not. I'm grateful that you have come. What happened in Mercia still puzzles me. Fulke saw something in Sigurd. A power, a legacy. What is it she wants? Her motives are difficult to fathom, but that can come later. Let's find your brother first. Agreed. If we do this, you'll earn the right to call me friend ten thousandfold. So, what is your plan? We are deep in their god's heartland. A heathen and a heretic. To hunt Fulke, we'll need a Christian snare. Fulke is hardly a saint herself. These Christians abhor her strange ideas. True. But unlike us, she can carry herself as one of them. She won't hide from everyone. Not with a prisoner in tow. So, where to begin? I've made a friend. Abbot Cunibert. Full of pious fire. But with ambition that far outweighs his wit. And what does your friend Cunibert know? Come. I will introduce you. And we'll hear the full tale together. Have you found some peace in your time alone, Basim? I am always at peace, and never alone. I move among the people of the world with great joy. I watch them, study them, learn from them at all times. This is our duty, the Hidden One's calling. You know, for the first time since we've met, you sound more like you're a princess than yourself. <laughs> Surely Hytham sounds like me, if I have taught him well. Your creed and your tenets, you mean? That's right. And our sense of, how should I say, deep responsibility to the betterment of mankind. That's quite an ambition. But it doesn't explain what you see in Sigurd. My brother is not so generous. Ah, but your brother is someone special, important. And I want him to see that. I hope to show it to him. Is this not a blessed plot? God's own country. And this Eden should be given to his servants to tend. Abbot Cunibert, this is the Norse I spoke of. Ah, yes. And quite a fearsome one at that. Basim says you know the paladin Fulke. Indeed. The Lady Fulke passed this way not more than a month ago. We talked, we drank. Very pleasant woman. And where is she? Eivor will be your axe, Abbot. Whether to fell a tree, or hew the limbs from an enemy. What have you promised him? Oh, just a trifle, Eivor. A little problem I believe you can help me with. This Norse is one who knows the value of silence and secrecy. The perfect choice for our subtle business.
Let's cut to the point. What favor would you ask in exchange for Fulke? Some weeks ago, our alderman in Kent was called to God. A terrible loss. King Alfred has chosen his replacement, but has not yet announced the name. I must know it. Now. All of Kent will see soon enough which Thane has chosen. Why not wait? I want early access. To woo him before his exalted position is made public and every fool is at his door. Who else knows the chosen man? The king's emissary. Sent with a letter of congratulations to the new elderman. Intercept him and bring me the news. When I know the thane's name, we'll discuss how I might win his favor. Why not kill him in secret and petition Alfred for the seat? As a man of God, I cannot. Besides, he who stands behind the throne can better pull on the puppet's threads. This emissary, how will I find him? Tunbridge Monastery sent word that the King's men always pass a few nights in their hospitality. Begin there. I'll get the Elderman's name. You find Fulke. All in good time. Now, if we're done, I have business up the south coast. Falkenstone has the best fish in Wessex. Then I will find you there, when the Elderman's name is mine. Cunibert is ambitious, but well-connected. We will not find Fulke without him. I suppose we'll see. What will you do? I'm not done playing with these Christians yet. I will see you in Falkenston.
Survey the area, Sunan. It's impossible! 25, then 26! They come and go and here? take my wits with them! What troubles you, old man? Please, I beg you. How many are there? I must know. How many what? The stones. Every time I count them, the answer is different. First 20, then 21. The fair folk made a madman of me. Rock cannot appear and disappear. I shall count them. Run round and round. Pick up your skirts. Don't drag your ropes through the dirt. Your stone sentries. I've counted them. And? How many lords and ladies come to dance a jig? There are twenty-one. I am as sure as I can be. See? Never the same. Never the same. Please, count them again. You must. To save my wits. I cannot get the same number twice. Never the same. Never the same. Cobweb cloaks and magpie hats. Now there are 26. How can this be? See? Never the same. Never the same. Please, count them again. You must. To save my wits. This is madness. They change each time. Don't close your eyes, or they'll steal the glinting flint. Scrabble it away. Perhaps there are 23. Ha! They have bewitched you too. Twirl and spin and dance and grin. Pyrwhack, it comes to bite your shin. Who came crawling from the moor like a fat black rabbit without any legs? I see you, glisten little imp. 27, 21, 23, 24, 22, 22, 22. I don't know how to help you. It seems as if the stones appear and disappear at will. You should not stay here. Leave. Leave before they claim you. The Screamer toy with me, casting his magic in England. That stone. What's it here before? And where is my mad friend? Damn this cursed place. Easy now. Something is not right.
Rainbow, Rainbow! To the waves. Let the sail out. Sail out. Sing, my ravens. Up we raise our shining blades, like wolf teeth they brightly glitter. Now the time for bravery calls us. Fearlessness shall march. Let's sail. Pick up. <laughs> they will attack on sight here. Even this day!
control cursed corruption lurks here. Stretch your wings, Sunan.
I should be cautious around here. Grant me! With me! Sunin, guide me. <laughs> I need your eyes, my friend. something else. These are the ramblings of a madman. But the animals, I cannot deny they tormented him. He fulfilled his own prophecy, and nature took its revenge. And that stench, rubbish and rotting food. In his fear, he barricaded himself inside. Little wonder the rats came. He was terrified. Believed himself cursed after killing a she-wolf and her cup.
What do you see, Sunan? I'm here, old man. Tell me your tale. Three young men came to me not long ago. Braggarts, full of drink and sin. Death had claimed a friend of theirs. So they set out to find Death and teach him a lesson. That is foolish. We Norse do not seek to control Death. We embrace it. I. But rudely they demanded of me, tell us where to find death. You are old. You must know him. Look no further, said I. He is under the great oak in the forest behind me. And that is where they went. A strange tale. And one that lingers like a terrible dream. Is this the great oak the old man spoke of? <laughs> Death. So this is what the old man meant. But what happened here? Strangled. That is no bandit's work. Killed by poison. No sign of a struggle. He must have taken it unknowingly. By his pallor, I would say Poison took this one's life. What was he reaching for, I wonder? Food and ale. But why make a camp here if they were searching for death, as the old man said? This played some part in this sorry scene. Three men found hidden treasure beneath the tree. They made camp while they decided how to split the prize. Two of them turned on the third. But he was one step ahead of them and had already poisoned their ale. So the glister of silver drove these greedy fools to murder. It seems they found death after all. Or death from them. Show me what lies ahead. Yeah. 